Welcome back to On the Ground with Samaritan's Purse, where we take you to the front lines and behind the scenes of our work around the world. I'm your host, Christy Graham, and today I have the honor of introducing you to my friend, Isabella. Isabella's life was forever changed when she received an Operation Christmas Child shoebox gift while living in communist Romania. Operation Christmas Child is a project of Samaritan's Purse, where we send gift-filled shoeboxes to children in need around the world. It's a simple concept with a huge eternal impact, and I can't wait for you to hear how God used this ministry to speak to Isabella. Her testimony is one of my favorites. Uh, Let's start with the beginning. So maybe share with the audience where you grew up and what childhood was like for you. Yes, I I grew up in communist Romania. So when I was born, it was already communism. And for us, communism meant a lot of different things. But my most vivid memories is just watching my mom and dad huddled around our little kitchen table and strategizing day after day how to feed us, how to buy us school supplies so we can go to school, how to get us new shoes because our feet were going so fast. Mm -hmm. So there weren't a lot of resources available to us. But the biggest thing that communism was really trying to do is to control things. And they controlled everything from where you lived, where you worked. My parents, they were appointed to an apartment where they lived their entire lives. And that's where my brother and I grew up. They were appointed to a heavy machinery factory where they worked their entire lives. We were given food on ratio, so we stood in long lines for everything. And the government decided what we would get, when we would get it, how much of it we would get. They controlled even what we wore. All of us wore the same clothes in Romania. But the biggest thing that communism was trying to control was to make sure that God's name was not known in our country because God himself was bigger than the dictator. They even recognized that and they wanted to make sure that God was not present in our country so that the dictator could be the highest authority possible. And so in a world growing up where you had limited resources, you know, there wasn't a lot of color or um, surprise or, you know, creativity in your life. Um, I know you had, you went to school, you would walk home and you would spend a lot of time in your apartment. And so uh, things were pretty, like you said, quiet and controlled. Talk to me about, I know, I know God still was working in you and your brother. You found a Bible. Can you talk to me about that and just how that opened your eyes to so much more? Yeah, life was so simple, Christy, in Romania. And we did spend a lot of time alone. My brother and I, my brother is three years older than me. So from the time I was three and he was six years old, my parents, they had to work. They had to go to the factory some from 5 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. when they got home from work. We were on our own. So they they spent a lot of time training us how to do this mm-hmm. life on our own. We had a key around our neck and and we were those kids who, who kind of just had to grow up really, really fast. And that is how everyone around us did life. It wasn't because my parents were neglectful of us. Mm-hmm. But God used that in just such a beautiful way. And, you know, growing up in spiritual darkness, I can't help but think of John 1, 5, when it says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And that is exactly what God did in our lives. When I was seven years old, my brother was 10, one afternoon, just kind of waiting around in our house for mom and dad to come home in this little tiny apartment. And and we had very strict instructions every single day to do our homework, to eat our lunch, and then to behave. And so we were trying to do this behaving part and looking around in, in our apartment. What can we play today? What can we do today? We found a hidden Bible in the floorboard of our little apartment. And when we found this little book, we never read it before. We never heard about a Bible before. But God used that to really start working on our hearts. This was just a regular book to us from all that we knew. We we pulled it out and we started reading it on page one, just like we were taught in school, how you're supposed to read a book. And we started learning about the fact that we were created by a God who created everything around us. We never heard these stories before. And God used that to start really working on our hearts even though at that point, 
we just thought these were amazing, powerful stories, but not really something that would be life-changing to us, just really exciting stories. But really, God's word turns out is life-changing and started a life change and a heart change within us. Mm-hmm. And then God took that even a step further. When I was in the fifth grade, I was invited by one of my classmates to a little underground church that he was attending. And he invited me while we were out at recess at our school in our courtyard, in the school courtyard. And he shared with me how he was going to this little underground church on Saturday nights after dark. And I could not picture what an underground church could be. What does that even mean? What does even the word church mean and what does it mean that it's underground and i was trying to picture this little place and it turns out that it was just a little house about a mile down the street from where we lived and we we started going there saturday nights after dark we we had to arrive by a certain schedule everyone who signed up to go we were arriving at different time frames to make sure we would not draw attention from the outside world. And in this little place, there was a core group of about 12 of us, children who were going there Saturday nights. And this pastor who was there, he was just reading to us stories. And it turns out that the stories he was reading was from the same book that was hidden mm-hmm. in the floorboard of our house. And that's where we made that connection, mm-hmm. that he was reading from the same book. So this book must be important. And then we started learning more about this book and the God that is behind this book. But even with all that, this pastor had to be very, very careful. He had to just read to us these stories, who, what, where questions. And then we would leave. There wasn't deep conversation about it. There wasn't prayer time in order to protect us, himself, and this little church uh, that we have been attending. Mm -hmm. And this is what I love. And I want to encourage people listening. You know, God he sees us. He created you. He knew you so well, and he pursued you. Um, Even in a closed country where, like you said, it was spiritually dark. You were not allowed to worship God and you openly, um, but he allowed a way. And so here he is writing a story that at the time you didn't even see, but now looking back, you can see how he was um, painting a, you know, a a picture and and making a tapestry of your life and and pointing pointing you to him. But like you said, it was in little bites. And so, yeah, an underground church, you know, many of us will never attend one. We we will not, many of us don't live in a country where that is the case, but that is the case around the world. Talk to me about your scenario because you, you, yours was different and you were actually in the early days of Operation Christmas Child before things were as organized as they are now. Um, so here you are, you've read the Bible, you've attended a underground church, and then talk to me about when and how you were able to receive a shoebox. Yes. So this pastor at this church was just such a humble, um, just really caring person who truly wanted us to find God in the midst of the spiritual darkness. So one of the things that he did, and I can see this now looking back, he didn't call it that at that point, but he started discipling us. Mm -hmm. And what that looked like is basically he said, if you have questions, you can come to me and you can ask me. And that is really the essence of discipleship. He was just such a humble giant of the faith. And I asked him if he could teach me how to pray. Now, remember, Christy, he couldn't pray with us. So I didn't have that model of knowing Mm -hmm. how to pray. He was very, very careful to make sure all he could do is just silently pray in his heart that God will work within our hearts through the simple stories that he was reading from the Bible to us. And so he asked me why I wanted to pray. And I was just a a 13-year-old little girl who wanted to have fun, and and winters were no fun for us. It gets dark really early. We didn't have electricity. We were living in spiritual darkness, but also little darkness. We didn't have streetlights. It was so dark in the winters. And the only way that mom and dad would let us go outside and play past dark is if it snowed outside. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we needed to have our homework ready, everything needed to be done and completed in in our little apartment before dark came. And then it was bedtime for us. And so winters just were really, really hard for us as kids. 
But the only way we could have fun and go outside and play past dark is if it snowed outside. So my question to him was as simple as, can you teach me how to pray? Because I want to have fun this winter and I want to have snow. That is the only way we can have fun. And I still remember to this day just how simply this pastor put it for me. And he just said, Isabella, you sit down and you talk to God like he's your best friend sitting right there next to you. You tell him what's on your mind, what's on your heart, and he will answer. And just thinking now about the simplicity of this, that there's a mighty God who created everything, including me, and he listens to me. And he wants me to come to him with my requests, with my questions. And that is exactly what I did. I just sat down simply and just said, God, it is winter. I don't like it. It is cold. It's no fun. I don't want to go to bed at 530. Would you please give me snow so I can have some fun this winter? It was as simple as that. Mm -hmm. For my pastor to come alongside of me and say, Isabella, God listens to simple prayers like that, and he always answers prayers. And so I expected God to answer that prayer, and I expected it to happen the next day in my childlike faith. And the next day, the snow wasn't there. And now looking back, I know that that snow wasn't there the next morning, not because God cannot do it, but because God was working on my heart, and he wanted to teach me a much deeper lesson than just the fact that he immediately answers prayers, because it's not always immediate. Sometimes it is. But God wanted to teach me the fact that he is a God who looks at me and wants the very best for me. And he will use every life circumstance to teach me much deeper lessons about who he is. And that's exactly what he did. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't answer that prayer for nearly three months for me. And by the end of three months, I was so disappointed. I was nearly convinced that maybe this is just this bible is just a really nice little storybook and everything this pastor is telling me that there is a big god behind his stories who is powerful and capable to answer prayers maybe he is just a mythical character after all mm -hmm. but he showed me after three months that that is not who he is and the way he showed it to me was through a simple colorful little gift that was handed to me on the streets of Romania. And I will never forget that moment. Mm -hmm. because and I love, yeah. I want you to share this because I know for you, you mentioned everything was waiting in lines, right? When you would see yes. trucks come, it was the delivery of food. And so you would mm -hmm. wait in line for food and, or whatever, whatever was brought to you. So talk to me about this day. I know there was a stir in your community <laughs> because trucks were coming and, you know, you heard that there was something coming, but you thought it was maybe food. Uh, but you, yeah, you mentioned it was a colorful shoebox, something you'd never I mean, colors you've never even seen before. So talk to me about that day and just why it was so profound. I will never forget that day, Christy. And just, we saw people running on the streets. And in Romania, when people run on the streets, that meant one thing, there was something at the grocery store. And those were exciting days for us. Mm -hmm. We were trained as kids to put our shoes on as fast as we could and run. We lived on the fourth floor of a flat apartment building with no elevator. So we would run really, really fast. And that was really exciting for us. Every single time there was something at the grocery store, that was the excitement in our lives. And, and sometimes people ask, you really enjoyed standing in lines? And yes, we actually really did enjoy mm -hmm. standing in lines because we knew we would get something that we didn't have. Mm -hmm. And so we are running towards the grocery store thinking we are going to get something and whatever it is, we don't have it. So it really doesn't matter. The question we really even asked the question, what was there? Because we knew we just didn't have it. So here we are running to the grocery store and people pass by the grocery store. Now in Romania, you were assigned to a grocery store. You couldn't just go to any grocery store because mm -hmm. they were books that kept record on everything you got. So when you got up in line, first question always was, what's your name? What's your address? They would pull up the big books and they would write down under your address, under your name, what you received on that day. So they were record records kept on everything you received. Hmm. And so when people pass by the grocery store, that was really confusing to us. Where could they be going and still be so excited? So we followed them so we wouldn't hmm. miss out on whatever was going on. 
And we ended up in the center of our little town and people were shouting, trucks are coming, trucks are coming. And they were so excited. And these three little trucks pulled in and they opened the backs of these trucks and they were filled with this beautiful, colorful boxes. And the best way I can describe it, Christy, is that it was like a splash of color entering our black and white world. Mm -hmm. We have never seen anything this colorful. Back then, you know, and like you mentioned, it was at the beginning of this ministry. They were not put in big cartons. They were literally just put in the trucks, these colorful mm -hmm. boxes. And I will never forget this sweet lady with a beautiful smile walking up to me. And she spoke my language. And she said, this is for you. Mm -hmm. And it is given to you freely, just like God's grace is freely given to every single one of us. And I remember just looking at her thinking, this cannot be right. Why would anyone come to us and give us something with no strings attached? Nothing I need to give back. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't happen in Romania. So I asked her, what do I have to do for this? And she reassured me that there's absolutely nothing I have to do. And she asked me if I had any prayer requests. Is there anything that she could pray with me for? Mm -hmm. And I just remember having that moment of like, yes, there is actually something you can pray with me for. If you would please pray with me for snow, that would be great. Mm. And this lady, she didn't ask me why. She just probably knew looking at me that this was important to me. Mm. And she knelt down to come down to my level and pray with me right there and then on the streets of Romania for snow and gave me a big hug and left with me this colorful shoebox in my hands. And I remember looking around and everyone around me is opening their boxes. All the children are excited and happy and smiling. And I started opening my box and it was just the most colorful thing I have ever had. And everything inside it was new. Mm. I have very, very rarely did we have new items and everything smelled so good and so colorful. I never had colored markers before. I never had colorful pencils before and everything was colorful in this box but in the corner of my shoe box was this little thing that caught my attention I didn't really know what to make of it and what it was and it was kind of round and made of plastic and silver and blue and I pulled it out and hold, held it in my hand trying to figure out what is this little thing and a little boy who was passing me by he took my hand with his hand and he said, you have to shake that. That's how that works. And when he did that, I remember looking down at this little silver and blue thing in my hand. And all I could see inside of it is silver snow flurries hmm. just going around. It was a little plastic silver and blue snow globe. <laughs> and I knew in that moment just literally moments after this lady prayed with me for God to give me snow. I knew in that moment that this God, who I was wondering if he's truly real, if he listens, mm -hmm. he wasn't just a character on the pages of the book we have been reading since I was seven years old, but he was a God who knew that I was ready to give up on him, but he was not ready to give up on me. And he showed up in this beautiful silver and blue snow globe. And it might sound so silly for some, but in, for me, for my 13-year-old heart, I knew in that moment that God saw me, mm. that he is real, that he knows my name, that he knows every hair on my head. And he knew that this was the way for him to show up, not on the next day after I started praying, the beautiful snow falling from the sky, but this was the way for him to truly move into my heart from all that head knowledge I had about him, for me to understand that he's so much more than a character in a storybook. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time, that was early in the ministry of Operation Christmas Child. So mm -hmm. probably tens of thousands of boxes were processed every year. Um, but now it's millions, but, but now we hear the same stories where God, yes. like you said, it says in Matthew, God knows how many hairs are on our head. He knows us so intimately and, and only he could have picked that box. Um, and every time I think of your story, I think of Ephesians uh, three twenty. it says now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us to him, be the glory 
in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I, I truly believe that this snow globe uh, answered your prayers um, in a far greater significant way, right? I mean, he brought it to you on that day to speak to you and to show you, I see you, I love you. Um, I'm going to bring you snow, but in a completely different way. And, and, you know, for people listening, the Operation Christmas Child, it is to bring the gospel. You know, yes, we want to bring toys and gifts um, physically, but it's more importantly, it's spiritually. And the gospel is a lot like that box. You know, you were handed that box and you had to open it right? The gospel, you know, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16 says that God sent his son Jesus to this earth, you know, uh, so that, you know, for God to love the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so that gift of the gospel is for all of us, but we all have to receive it. And so that box, that's why the shoe box, you had to open it, you had to take those gifts out, and you even had to shake that snow globe to see what it was. So that is what the gospel does. It's it's given to all of us, but we all have to make that choice and accept it. And so that day, like you said, it, you powerfully, all the ways that he had spoken to you throughout the years, through his word, through your pastor, it was now coming to, to fruition. You know, he was showing you, I am real. Uh, God, Elroy, I see you. Talk to me about what God did in your life through that shoe box and then in your family. Yes. You know, I, I love, Christy, that you mentioned Ephesians 3.20 and another translation said that he does immeasurably more than what we can ever ask or imagine. Mm -hmm. And that is what he did in my life. Mm -hmm. I never could have imagined that God is my personal God. I I truly knew him intellectually, mm -hmm. but that day allowed me to know him and his heart for me. And for those who are listening, I really want you to hear that, that God, yes, we can know about God, but it's so much sweeter and deeper to know him and his heart for each of us. And that's what happened for me on that day. That was the day when I decided that whatever happens, I will follow him and serve him to the best of my abilities for the rest of my life. And it is a decision that I needed to make in that moment. And it, it came naturally to me because it was a discovery moment for me that this is a God who knows me and a God who will never give up on me, even though I was ready to give up on him. Mm -hmm. And how important that is that the God we serve and the God of the Bible will never give up on any of us. Mm -hmm. And, and that was the moment for me to, to discover that. And it was such a beautiful moment to watch all around me. So many others who heard the same gospel on that day, because Operation Christmas Child, when they go into places, one thing that we never heard as the ones who were the recipients of it. We never heard the name Operation Christmas Child. We never heard the name Samaritan's Purse because the one name mm -hmm. that they were focused on for us to hear on that day was the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that is the focus of Operation Christmas Child. And that is what we want children today even to hear every time that they receive a shoebox gift. This was the most beautiful, tangible, colorful gift I have ever received in my entire childhood. But the reality is that I no longer have any of those items. I still do have my snow globe, unfortunately, in pieces, but I still hold on to that because of the significance of it. Mm -hmm. However, what never left and what remained throughout the years is the God I discovered through that shoebox. And that is exactly what we want these shoeboxes to be. But we need that tangible representation of God's love to hand to children so they can discover a much bigger God behind it. What I love the most about Operation Christmas Child is that anyone can mm -hmm. do it. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. Anyone can take a simple shoebox that you might have in your closet mm -hmm. and fill it with school supplies, hygiene items, toys, and then if I could add one more thing, it's just to personalize your shoebox. 
how important it is to write a personal note over and over again, as I am working with so many from around the world who have received a shoebox gift, that personal note made such a difference for them. What a beautiful thing that we can be part of and be the hands and feet of Jesus by Mm -hmm. simply packing a shoebox gift. I wish we had more time to share Isabella's entire story. Uh, But I want to fast forward. Years later, Isabella moved to the United States. She started teaching at a Christian school in North Carolina. And this is where she heard the name of Operation Christmas Child for the first time in her life. When she received the shoebox in Romania, she didn't know what organization sent it. And then her school started packing shoebox gifts. And when she saw the brochure, she made the connection that this was the ministry God used to change her life. And now Isabella works for Samaritan's Purse full time. This year, Operation Christmas Child's National Collection Week is November 14th through the 21st. But you can also pack a shoebox year-round or build a box online. And I want to say, unfortunately, you cannot include snow globes in shoeboxes anymore. Candy and liquids aren't allowed because of custom regulations. And so go on the website and you can get some creative ideas of items that you can include and how you can bless a child in need. We'll include a link in our show notes. Thanks for listening today and have a blessed week.